การเรียนรู้คือการค้นคว้าสแสวงหาแล้วก็ค้นหาคําตอบในสิ่งที่เรายังไม่รู้ค่ะสําหรับผมมันไม่ได้เกิดขึ้นในห้องเรียนครับการเรียนรู้เนี่ยมันอยู่นอกห้องเรียนอยู่แล้วครับการเรียนรู้ก็คืออยู่กับเราตลอดเวลาไม่ว่าเราจะเดินไปตรงไหนก็คือเป็นการเรียนรู้มองเห็นต้นไม้ต้นนี้ก็เป็นการเรียนรู้มองเห็นตึกอาคารต่างๆก็เป็นการเรียนรู้สิ่งที่ทุกคนอยู่อยู่ก็คือการเรียนรู้ค่ะเรียนรู้จากอินเทอร์เน็ตค่ะเพราะวาดภาพก็มีสอนวาดฟรีใน YouTube ค่อนข้างที่จะเยอะเลยค่ะแล้วก็ส่วนหนึ่งจากหนังสือด้วยค่ะการเรียนออนไลน์เนี่ยมีข้อดีตรงที่ว่าเราสามารถเรียนช่วงไหนก็ได้มันจะมีหลายอย่างที่ในห้องเรียนไม่มีการเรียนรู้นอกห้องเรียนมันอาจจะดีกว่าการเรียนรู้ในห้องเรียนก็ได้ครับสวัสดีค่ะอันปุสมาโยธาสมุทรยโฮสต์ Welcome to Thailand Today COVID-19 has impacted various industries worldwide including the education sector To assist those impacted from the pandemic in Thailand, the Asia Foundation, together with the Australian Embassy in Thailand, earlier launched a learning portal to called ThailandLearning.org to provide continuous learning resources for the development of Thai youth amidst COVID-19. So, in May 2020. We had the opportunity to discuss uh, this initiative with the Asia Foundation. So, as a follow-up on the progress of the project, today we will speak to Ambassador of Australia to Thailand, His Excellency Alan McKinnon, and the Asia Foundation Senior Program Officer Dr. Ratana Laut, the latter of whom we spoke to in May as well. So, Swadika. Welcome to Thailand Today, both of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much for asking us. Well, let's just begin with uh, Dr. Ratana first. So, uh, under the initiative that I understand that uh, uh, you have been traveling quite uh, a lot to many, many cities uh, to ensure the education of the country. So, can you tell us about uh, the, uh, what about this and uh, as well as the uh, uh, rationale to, uh, behind it? Yes, um, as you have said, um, the Austrian Embassy and the Asia Foundation has launched worldwideweb.thailandlearning.org. Yes. So after the COVID situation is a little bit um, improved in the countryside, um, we visited Mahasarakam schools, mm -hmm. particularly Mahasarakam Pithayakum, okay. to engage with all the students there and see how they use the portal in real life. Mm -hmm. We follow these groups of students to their house and we, we ask them what they think about the portal, how we can improve improve um, how they engage with our learning resources, mm -hmm. what do they want. Yeah. So it's, it's really eye-opening mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what has the education in Thailand been you focusing on and why is it? Um, I think most of our education system has focused so much on the content of mm -hmm. the curriculum mm -hmm. that the students have to memorize um, so much of the knowledge. So and now on no memorizing? Um, that's, <laughs> I think you cannot take memorization away from learning. It's yeah. part of the yeah. puzzle. And uh, what we can do is improve the skills and insights and understanding mm -hmm. of, of that part. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Maybe. How about your excellency? Uh, Australian had been to, uh, well before we get into our question. I would like to know it. Australian had been a kind of a world famous, uh, uh, popular among the educational student. So how is the situation at the moment? Well, the situation is very much affected by COVID. Of course, uh, we previously had a very large education export sector, yes, sir. and uh, Thailand was an important part of that. It was one of our ten uh, biggest markets, mm -hmm. and played a really important role. Something like twenty thousand students from Thailand going to Australia every year, whether it's schools, mm. vocational, or, or university. That's all been knocked back a lot by uh, mm. COVID. So we're looking mm. forward to ways, innovative ways, to restart that education industry. Mm. Yeah, let's. Cross our fingers. Mm. <laughs> so this is a great option uh, initiative indeed. So why is there an interest uh, from Australia on Thai education? We understand that students want to go there, but yeah, right here in Thailand. Well, uh, Thailand is 
First of all, it's a, I've said it's a big industry, but Thailand is also a very important partner to Australia. It's uh, a top 10 partners in, in just about any area you can imagine, whether that is economic, whether that's trade, mm. uh, defence cooperation. So mm. we're, we're close partners. And our two prime ministers just last week uh, just signed a strategic partnership agreement. They want to grow that relationship. Mm. Without education, mm -hmm. there's a big mm -hmm. part of the relationship mm -hmm. missing. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. uh, as I've said to you, it's very important and uh, we want to get all of those Thai students back into Australia. What we find is that the alumni from mm -hmm. uh, Australian education mm -hmm. institutions, whatever those are, play a very important part in the mm -hmm. ongoing relationship. Mm -hmm. Many of the key drivers of development, whether it's economic or trade, were people who studied in Australia. So they pay a double bonus, really. Mm. We want to get more of them back there. Yeah. But how about uh, maybe, what is the number? How did it decrease from, 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 from 100 to zero or what? Pretty much. Uh, Ooh, much of this year we've been bad. working with my counterpart in Australia, Ambassador Busadi, to bring back Thai students to meet their families. Uh. There's still some in Australia. I personally know um, I personally know some young Thai students still in Australia, but mm. if I had to have a guess, I'd say that number's gone down by at least three quarters. Mm. Uh, and partly that's students going home, mm. uh, but also, of course, it's students who can't apply for the next year with any confidence yet. So mm. it's a big change. Mm. Do they need to come back home? Didn't well, I mean, if they're young and they haven't seen their families and they're only at school, I think many of the families feel more comfortable if the mm. students mm. Are, are back home with them. So mm. that's, mm. it's not just Australia that has suffered from that, of course, that's been mm. some, mm. a feature of the international education industry yeah. over the last year. So mm. uh, Australia, look, is a very safe country. Many parents have just as have just been uh, quite happy to leave their mm. kids there, mm. um, but they, you know, they like to have them back with their families as well. Mm -hmm. In connection to the question just now, so what is what are the response for this? It, it, well, our government has been, it's been a COVID response, uh, I'm afraid, rather than an education response. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're working very hard to get mm -hmm. our COVID uh, infection under control and we're having a lot of success. When I was, we're not quite as advanced as, as Thailand is, but over the last few weeks we've got down to pretty minimal numbers, almost zero across the whole country. Mm -hmm. That allows us to start thinking about ways you can think cleverly about getting students in. in. My way of thinking about it, uh, if you're a tourist, you don't want to be in quarantine for mm. two weeks. Mm. But if you're coming for a whole year, mm. maybe one week might be okay. So oh. I think uh, state governments are thinking now creatively about how they can open up opportunities for students to come to Australia. That's interesting. Dr. Ratana, to give us a broad overview to, on education sector in Thailand and how it's doing and uh, how could you tell us about uh, how, what the impact of this COVID-19 as was well say? I think COVID hit us really hard um, mm. in a way that Painful. it changed the way we think about learning. Mm. And um, immediately after COVID has hit us, the Ministry of Education has moved all the learning um, mm. to online platform. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. makes online platform the epicenter of learning for students. Mm -hmm. But um, it also makes us uh, reflect on the reality mm -hmm. of the situation in Thailand because rampant inequality, poverty in the, situ in the country, not every student has mm. access to mobile phone or exactly. um, computer and what we have seen is even if they have cell phone not everyone has internet access mm. so they rely on the school as a center of learning to mm. get more uh, learning mm. um, internet from the school mm. so I think the pandemic make us think critically mm -hmm. about the relationship between technology and learning. Mm -hmm. um, 1999 Education Act has said that education should be, a, le technology should be a part of learning. Mm -hmm. But um, for the past 20 years, the progress on that front has been rather slow. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a wake up call mm -hmm. and an uh, opportunity to think ahead. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you think things are going to get back to normal? If things could die down, that what you have done before and going to be in the future? What's normal for you? Going back to classroom? Go back to classroom. I think student, students already go back to classroom, but it will, they realize mm. that they, are, they need to be more alert. Mm. They need to be more adept to change. Mm. They can't just rely on teachers in mm. front of classroom anymore. Mm. Because no I think, up. yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, and I think they have to wake up to realize mm. that um, they have to be active Engage, mm. engagement mm. with learning, exactly, yes. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so what is it crucial to ensure that there is continuous education during this trying time? Um, 
I think everyone has to help. Parents has to help. Principals mm. have to help. Ministry of Education has to help. Everyone mm. has to realize that learning has to be the center of the attention mm -hmm. for students because if it doesn't mean that if they don't go to school, they can't learn. They can learn with their grandparents, they can learn with their TV. Um, the education sector has worked together quite aggressively during the past 10 months to reach out to online learning platforms across the board. So we are a part of the system. We, um, Thailand Learning is a part of the bigger picture. And I think um, going ahead, everyone has to realize that learning for all also requires all for learning. Mm. Right. All right. Okay, we're going to come back yes. for the tech part. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with more Thailand Today. Let's go. COVID-19 warriors. We will not give up. Thank you for protecting us during the COVID-19 crisis. Thank you to the chefs who kept people full. Thank you to the dancers who helped create happiness in this dark period. Most importantly, thank you, the Thai people who have bravely endured this epidemic together. We will not give up. We can and we will to redefine the future of our nation. Let's join hands, COVID-19 warriors. Welcome back. You are watching Thailand today. We continue our discussion with Ambassador of Australia to Thailand, His Excellency Alan McKinnon, and the Asia Foundation Senior Program Officer Dr. Ratanalaut on their joint efforts to assist Thai youth on education and development amid the post pandemic. Well, we did, we did stop at certain part of it. So when well, listen to you, Dr. Rutner, I feel that because uh, you sound like uh, people are going to get back home and study a, a normal education institute anymore. Um, I think parental involvement has become more increasingly important for yeah. education in Thailand. Yes. And, but that doesn't take away the role of schooling and the role uh. of universities as a centers for exchanges. Yeah. But then of course that exchanges can take place online. Mm. But it's really hard to replace face-to-face -face learning. Mm. I think the meaningful engagement and the meaningful mm. exchange when people mm -hmm. meet together um, cannot be repressed, but mm. um, it's slowed out, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. Your Excellency, cooperation in education is among important aspects of the bilateral relation with Australia and Thailand. So what are the examples of Australia projects aimed to assist uh, in education and sector? Uh, Kun we have a lot of projects and uh, they're not all government to government. Some of them are university to university, vocational institution to vocational institution and schools to schools. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you a couple of examples of uh, successful uh, vocational partnerships that we have. Mm -hmm. One of them, for example, is the upskilling of um, vocational education and trainer <coughs> and training trainers. So train the trainers. Uh, we also uh, have um, a, a bridge, an ASEAN bridge school partnerships, and these are to bring schools together between Thailand and, Aust and Australia in this case. We've got 33 of those school <coughs> partnerships, the students working together, mm. and we uh, promote as Thai teachers to go to Australia to be oh, part of that partnership cool. as well. Uh, we're working with OVEC uh, to implement the international skills okay. uh, training course for, again, for trainers and assessors. Mm. So it's more about working at that trainer uh, and assessor level to raise capabilities rather than working at the ground level to teach the students themselves. And we're also working with the Goethe Institute uh, in Bangkok, for example, to teach uh, STEM, sil STEM skills training uh. to, to STEM uh, teachers. And so, again, we're teaching the teacher there, but in that important area of STEM skills. Oh, that is a, that's a cooperation more because since, since this is happening, so is it more cooperation needed from many sector? These are long-standing programs in some cases. We've been doing them for a decade, but mm. uh, I think there's probably more of a focus on, on them at this mm. time, especially to the extent that they are able to be done mm. uh, virtually and, uh, and on digital platforms. Mm -hmm. Dr. Latina, how do you think about education and learning will change this post-COVID-19? I think 
people will be more de independent mm -hmm. on their learning. Mm -hmm. um, one of the issue, one of the philosophies that has changed is personalized learning. Mm -hmm. Instead of relying on teachers or institutions, I think students will realize that they have to rely on themselves and become more independent. Mm -hmm. But like I said before, that doesn't take away the role of the institutions. Mm -hmm. Schools and universities can play pivotal roles in nurturing this knowledge and. Um, understandings of the world for students. There mm -hmm. need to be new way of collaborating between teachers, between mm -hmm. academics, between principals um, mm -hmm. to make sure that learning take place. So mm -hmm. I think, like I said before, we're learning a pandemic has changed everything. Yeah. You talk about the responsibility. Do you think how much they can do that? Who? The students? Oh, they can do a lot. I, I really strongly believe in the empowerment of the students and you give them the tools, you give them the guidelines, they can change what they learned about themselves and the world around them. Yeah, to a certain extent that we have seen it because some of the school, the student, students come back home, don't even take care of their own self. But now things have changed and you think how much they can be standing up to I think stand for such a thing? Um, the society ha can grow together. I think the society, the media sector mm. can grow with us, mm. uh, with education sector. Mm. The media sector can produce better content to improve mm. the quality of learning. Mm. And a program like this can mm. be you know, broadcasted in schools to teach English to students. There are so many opportunities out there available for governments, non-government, embassies, mm. media to work together. Yeah. It's something like a, a kind of a vocational kind of thing, yeah. manually instead of classroom? Yes. Is that, is that the way to, to, to go? I think inside and outside classroom, online and offline oh, learning, oh, yeah. um, there need to be an integration between off facet yeah. of learning. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what are other projects uh, in work uh, for development of Thai students? Well, we, we're working on more and more uh, st student and teacher exchanges, uh, curriculum development, industry mm -hmm. uh, uh, institution uh, tie-ups. To give you one example that makes exactly. sense of that jumble of words, um, where we've got a um, an international chef yes, program, sir. and so we pick some of your best young chefs out of vocational institutes. We train them up at an international standards with uh, Australian um, uh, educators, and they then they have a qualification that can take them around the world. Thai food is world famous. We make the chefs world famous in their competence too, and so that's going to help when we can get the Thai uh, tourism uh, sector open again. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, so what are some de new developments pertaining the learning and education in Thailand? Um, for us, with Thailand Learning, we are moving forward to increase even more resources on the portal. Mm -hmm. We are looking forward to make it an application, so it's mm -hmm. more user-friendly for students. Mm -hmm. We are looking forward to partner with ministries, different ministries, um, education and other sectors in order to improve our mm -hmm. content. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely one way we are going forward to the future. Mm -hmm. yes. What we are talking about now, do we mean about the general public? We talk about general education or the rich and the poor and the what. So everybody must be able to, because this is going to change lots, add up more for the education and all that. So is there anything, I'm a little worried about the people who are not able to support or to have the education. I think um, when you go underground to the, the provinces, you realize the government has done a lot of things for mm. the people as well. Mm. Like the Department of Rice, for example, mm. provided on the ground training for yes, yes. For, for farmers ah, in yeah. the COVID era of how they exactly. can market themselves, now, how mm. they can promote online um, mm. uh, tools. So there are many exciting programs on the ground. So mm. I think many departments uh, realize <laughs> that after COVID, they have to be more active to reach out. Yes. It's interesting. Want to add up anything, sir? Well, I just add that this website, to me, uh, it's a tremendous resource available to students, but the issues have always been the same. Mm. If stu There are some students who will access all the resources mm. that are given to them, mm -hmm. and there's some that won't, and that's where we have to, the institutions still have an ongoing role, the parents will always have to have an ongoing role, mm. including making sure that the boys aren't just playing computer games on their, yes. on their computers. Exactly. <laughs> that can happen too, but it's, uh. if I look back at my own school career and think, mm. I wish they had something like this when I was uh. young. We had to go to the library and get out books and so uh, there's so much more available now. Yeah, it's okay because they made you as ambassador. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> this is the last question but uh, any of you can answer this. How should students adapt themselves for this post-COVID-19? 
they have to be independent, I think, and they have to be respectful of diversity of this learning. Is difficult. Yes, they have to they have to strike the balance between relying on themselves and listen to other people, mm -hmm. because um, the opposite extreme of being independent is is not going to be conducive to learning. Mm -hmm. So they have to also learn to respect the communities and listen to the diversity of learning out there. I think mm -hmm. that's the post COVID learning. Ambassador, add a little bit, please. I think that's very good advice. Uh, mm. This sort of resource gives them a, a, a window onto the world, gives them much more understanding about what possibilities that they have, and I think a greater understanding too of their need to have an education themselves because the world is changing so fast. Changing. The jobs of the future, the opportunities of the future rely upon them having higher degree of skills. So I think this has, can play a very special role in teaching mm. them. Now the, the, uh, the challenge is to make sure that they've got the resources, the internet access and the handheld devices to be able to utilise this resource. All right. Thank you so much for being here with us and uh, best, all the best for your undertaking. Thank yes, you very much. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. Thank you so much, Ambassador of Australia to Thailand, His Excellency Alan T. McKinnon, and the Asia Foundation Senior Program Officer, Dr. Ratana Laut, for talking to us about initiatives on the education front and help ensure learning continuity during the post COVID 19. And that's all for the time we have for uh, today's episode. We broadcast every Tuesday to Friday at 9 p.m. on NBC World and live on YouTube. I'm Kusuma Yotajmuti. Mm -hmm.